What are we discussing on today's podcast, you ask? Well, we got to break down that disgusting series loss to the New York Mets. And then why not power rank the remaining strength of schedules for the NL wildcard team so we can at least get an idea of who has the best chance of making the postseason? Breaking it all down on today's Lock on Diamondbacks podcast. You are locked on Diamondbacks. Your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day listening to who? Always charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas. I'm a multimedia journalist and my graphic designer, so please go check out my website, millerthomas 24myportfoliocom On there, you can see all my latest work from my packages to my articles from my photos and my graphic design. If you want to see more content by me, just follow me on Twitter at creatorthomas24 for my personal account, or just look up Locked on Dimebacks, both Twitter and Instagram for the podcast handle. And of course, thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, viewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free and available on all platforms, so please continue to tell your friends. One of those platforms is YouTube, so please hit subscribe on the Locked on Dimebacks YouTube channel. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. Now let's get into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast and let's discuss that series to the New York Mets because I don't know why, but this Mets franchise just completely... The Mets franchise just completely owns the D-backs right now, and I can't explain why. I don't know why when the D-backs go into City Field, they just suck, like quite literally just suck. Is it because they're going from West Coast to East Coast? Is it something with the City Field dimensions, or is the field just got some sort of hex on this Arizona Dimebacks baseball team? Because the D-backs now, after this Third straight loss to the New York Mets have now lost 19 of their last 23 games against the New York Mets, and it has not been pretty. And most of them we know in this series, the D-backs have been outscored 28 to 10. And the offense really over the last couple of weeks, last three weeks, hasn't been great. It's been the pitching a lot of times that have led to the D-backs wins. I don't know what has happened to this D-backs offense over the last couple of weeks. This offense has gone through slumps and peaks and valleys throughout this season and right now they are in another prolonged slump because they only had four hits in this series finale they were 0 for 2 with runners scoring position they've been hitting double plays all week and it just has not been pretty feels like they were smashing balls to Brandon Nimmo in center field every time there was a big opportunity in the game Corbin Carroll only had one hit Marte was 0 for 2 I mean Jordan Lawler, 0 for 1. Alec Thomas, 0 for 4. I mean, I'm just looking at random dudes, stat, you know, stat lines from the game today. But really, this offense just hasn't been good the last couple of weeks. And you can have a struggling offense when your pitching is okay. And the last two days, the D-backs have had their two best pitchers on the mound, a Zach Gallon and a Merrill Kelly. Zach Gallon was the Cy Young favorite for the first half of the season. He's been struggling in the second half. He's been struggling on the road, but he was coming off a start where he pitched a complete game shutout, and you're like, okay, maybe this is the start of another scoreless streak for Zach Gallon, who we know can just go on these prolonged tears of looking like the best pitcher in baseball, looking like one of the best pitchers of all time against a New York Mets team that has a high payroll, but not a lot of success this season I thought maybe Zach Gallon could once again put together another phenomenal start to just solidify a huge D-backs win in the standings and also just really solidify himself as a Cy Young finalist and maybe take the lead once again in the Cy Young award race unfortunately unfortunately that did not happen Zach Gallon gave up six earned runs in game three but we were like, it's okay. We got Merrill Kelly on the mound in the finale. He's going to tie. He's going to win and tie up the series. What did Merrill Kelly do? Seven earned runs. Both of those guys just completely wet the bed when the games matter the most, right? We're at the end of the season. These guys only gonna have like one or two more starts left. And both of them came up super duper small in a huge game against this Mets team. And it's really sad to see, but at least you can share the blame with everyone on this roster. It's not like there was anyone in the lineup this series that really you know, win off or you could be like, you know what? 
at least that guy really stepped up to the plate. Maybe a Tommy Pham. I mean, he had another hit today. He was kind of the hero in game one. Like you could say he played well this series, but outside of him, not a very good series for any particular position player. And the pitching, not exactly great either. Um, don't even need to talk about the bullpen. I mean, Scott McGuff gave up three earned runs in a meaningless, you know, in, in meaningless outings as well. Uh, in a meaningless outing in this finale against the New York Mets. So d back just come get completely shellacked by the Mets. And when you preview this d back series against the Chicago Cubs, uh, it, it's not exactly set up for the d backs from a pitching perspective. Because like I just said, Merrill Kelly and Zach Allen went in the last two days. So you know what that means? It means we don't we don't get to see either of those two pitchers in this big series against the Chicago Cubs, where if the D-backs do sweep the Cubs, the D-backs will take the number two wild card spot. So big series for the D-backs against the Cubs. I had to bring on a little extra luck for this YouTube video stream. I got Christian Skywalker, the bobblehead, on the stream for on the stream with me. If you're watching Locked on Dimebacks on YouTube, needed a little bit extra luck going to, going into this series against the Cubs, and especially after that series against the New York Mets. The D-backs probable pitchers: Brandon Fott versus Justin Steele in Game One. We get to see Justin Steele again. Looks like he's potentially the Cy Young Award favorite. Kyle Hendricks in Game 2 has been really good against Zach Davies. And Ryan Nelson in Game 3 against Jordan Wick. So for the Cubs, they're going to throw out three really good pitchers by the numbers. I mean, Justin Steele, Cy Young finalist. Kyle Hendricks, just a veteran who's solid. And then Jordan Wicks, by the numbers, really good this season. While the D-backs are throwing out the three worst starters in their rotation. So if the D-backs... The D-backs are going to need their offense probably in this series against the Cubs. Take at least two out of the three games. The D-backs are going to need to start piling up some wins because they are tied right now with both the Giants and the Cincinnati Reds in the standings. And that is not good because the D-backs don't own the tiebreaker against either the Giants or the Reds. So the D-backs are going to have to finish ahead of them in the standings. Now, they do have one more series against the Giants, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But as it currently stands, the D-backs don't own the tiebreaker against the Giants or the Reds. So the D-backs are going to have to stack up wins and finish ahead of those two teams in the standings for them to make the postseason. But silver lining after today, the Giants game postponed. So they are now tied with the D-backs for that third wildcard spot. And the Reds, they lost today's game so they are also tied the marlins also lost today so they stay behind the d-backs a half game so when you look at the wild card race it's the phillies number one it's the cubs number two and then it's the giants reds and d-backs tied for number three with the marlins just a half game behind that that is why in segments number two and number three we are power ranking the toughest remaining strengths of schedules in the national league wild card race to really see how it's going to potentially play out the rest of the way but for the D-backs, if they want to make the playoffs, they're going to have to do a couple things. They're going to have to score more runs. One run in a game is not good enough. Only two opportunities to run with scoring position is not good enough. Tori Lovello, just play your best players. Carroll out there. Give me, I need Carroll. I need Marte. I need Christian Walker. I need who? Jordan Lawler. I need Perdomo. I need Gabriel Moreno. Figure out the Alec Thomas, the McCarthy, the Gurriel mix in the outfield after that. But make sure if you're Tori Lovello, just put your best players out there. I need Lawler, Perdomo, left side, Marte, Walker, right side of the infield. Then I need Carroll, probably in right field, either Thomas in center field. I need Gurriel in left field. So it probably comes down to either Thomas or Jake McCarthy, depending on if you're wanting a little extra chaos on the bases or probably better defense in the outfield where Alec Thomas better base running would probably be Jake McCarthy, but Alec Thomas is still elite too. But one of those two guys in your outfield and then at DH, probably a Tommy fan would make me the most happiest. So I think that's the best D backs lineup. Yeah. You can still play a long go here or there, but for the most part, I want to shrink the lineup. I want to shrink the amount of guys we're playing. Just put your best position players out there every single day. Don't worry about the righty lefty cross matchup. I don't care about platooning at this point in the season. Like, just put your most talented players out there. I think that's what matters the most. Same with the bullpen. I mean, obviously, you can't throw out Paul Seawald every single day, but you got to shrink the bullpen a little bit. Only throw out the guys you trust. Like, I like the fact they threw out Scott McGuff today. Should have kept him out there longer. I know he gave up three earned runs, and that's why he probably couldn't keep out couldn't keep him out there longer. But if he gave up those three earned runs over like two and two-thirds innings, I would have been pretty happy so he could at least kept the bullpen 
you know, fresh in a big D backs blowout. And unfortunately, the D backs, and unfortunately, Scott McGuff was not even good enough to keep the D backs bullpen fresh because after two thirds of an inning, he had to be taken out. But for the D backs, offense needs to be better, pitching needs to be better, as we only have five series left in the 2023 MLB season. And now we're going to be power ranking the remaining strengths of schedules in the National League wildcard race. But before we get there, I first want to talk to you guys about FanDuel, because if you want to bet on the D-backs to make the postseason, no better place to do that than FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with an incredible offer from America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed, plus all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is super easy to use and can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. Best believe I use the same game parlay feature whenever the D-backs are playing. Zach Allen over on innings pitch, Corbin Carroll or RBI double, and I take the D-backs money line. That only hits about 10% of the time, but when it does, I feel great. So visit FanDuel slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And don't forget to catch every D-backs pitch on their hometown broadcast when you download the series XM app and search up Diamondbacks. And now let's get back into the lock on Diamondbacks podcast and let's power rank the remaining strengths of schedules in the National League wildcard race because the D-backs and the rest of the teams in the NL wildcard race each have five series remaining. This is crunch time in Major League Baseball. And like we said about the standings, it is incredibly close. The Phillies lead the top spot by four games. The Cubs are second, leading by two and a half games. And then the Giants, Reds, and D-backs all tied for that third wild card spot with the Marlins just a half game behind. One of the tightest races I can remember in a long time. Even the AL is also pretty tight because you got the Rangers with the number two spot in the wild card race, just a half game ahead with the Mariners in that number three spot with the Blue Jays in the number four spot, one game behind. So theirs is more of a three team race for two spots. The NL is kind of, I mean, if you want to include the Cubs, you could say it's one, two, three, five teams for two spots, which is just incredibly insane. And for this exercise, I'm not even counting the Philadelphia Phillies because up four games with five series left, like the Phillies would have to go, pretty in the basement and really have to go into a pretty prolonged slump and considering this team is three games above 500 this team is pretty loaded with talent in their lineup solid rotation and bullpen like i think this phillies team is pretty much a lock to make it to the postseason i would be pretty shocked if they fell out of the wild card race so that's why we're staying away from them today so the only teams we're power ranking today for the remaining strength of schedule d-backs cubs reds and marlins and First up, we're going to go in a straight order. Number one in this power ranking for me for the toughest schedule. Oh, should I start from the bottom, actually? Should I do a reverse pyramid? Maybe that's more interesting. I don't know. I'm going to go with the, my original idea. Let's just go in the normal power ranking. The team that I think has the toughest remaining schedule in the NL wildcard race, the San Francisco Giants. You look at the five remaining teams that they have to face, the Rockies, the D-backs, the Dodgers, Padres, and the Dodgers once again. One playoff team, one wild card potential team in the D-backs, and then one non-playoff team in the Colorado Rockies. Giants only have to play, what is that, uh, four more teams the rest of the way. And the funny thing for the Giants, all of them, NL West division opponents. So not only do they have to go against the Dodgers, face them twice, incredibly tough, one of the best teams in Major League Baseball, right? That's going to be tough. They also have to face the D-backs, a team that is scrapping and clawing to make it to the postseason, just like the Giants. And then your Padres, they're no kick in the walk. Yes, they may not make it to the postseason, but they're still a team loaded with talent, loaded with MVP-type players. And I do think the added wrinkle that, this is all NL West opponents for the Giants. I do think adds a, 
another level of difficulty because I mean you could either go you could really go in any direction with the the division opponent take you could say well they're most familiar with them so maybe it'll make it easier since the Giants will know the tendencies better of the D-backs Giants Padres and Rockies but I also think the reverse is true I actually think it's tougher to play against your division because they also know your own tendencies your weaknesses your strengths like they know everything about you you see that team more than anyone so there's going to be no surprises in those divisional games. So I think for the Giants, I think it would be tougher to go against NL West opponents than probably like AL West opponents just because of that familiar familiar rarity factor for this Giants team. And facing the, Do- facing the Dodgers twice, I don't think is going to be easy because I don't think the I don't think the Dodgers are a franchise that are going to take their foot off the gas. I think they I think if the Dodgers have an opportunity to knock the Giants out the postseason. I think they will take that. We don't have a lot of respect for the Rockies, but the D-backs will try to destroy the Giants in that series because guess what? The D-backs, I think, let me pull it up real quick. I think I have my d back schedule right here. Yeah, it's only a two-game series against the Giants. I think the Giants are four and three against the D-backs this season. So if the D-backs get a two-game sweep against the Giants, they will reclaim the tiebreaker against the Giants. So massive series there and i don't think the padres are going to be a cakewalk either i think they will be playing spoiler down the stretch it's not like they're a team that has a ton of young talent that's ready for the major league level so i think we'll, we'll i think we will see a lot of the star players for the padres still playing until the final day of the season so that's why i have the giants number one with the toughest remaining schedule number two i think is the chicago cubs because for the cubs they've played the d-backs Pirates, Rockies, Braves, and Brewers. That's two locked-in playoff teams with the Braves and the Brewers, one potential wildcard team in the D-backs, and then two non-playoff teams. The Atlanta Braves are by far the best team in Major League Baseball, you could say. Maybe you want to say since they will have like everything locked up in the National League, I believe. Let me check the standings real quick. The Braves are 96 and 50. The Dodgers are 88 and 57. So the Braves pretty much have the number one seed on lock. They're going to get a buy. So with that being the case, maybe the Braves rest some people toward the end of the season. It will be the second to last series of the year, the Cubs versus Braves. So maybe the Braves aren't taking that series as seriously. Maybe they're resting some guys. So that could be the silver lining there for the Cubs. But if not, you're going to go against a full throttle Braves team. I mean, maybe the Braves are trying to get Spencer Strider, the Cy Young, or Ronald Acuna, the MVP. So those are the things you have to watch out for if you're the Cubs. Like, yeah, the Braves won't be playing for anything as a team, but individually, they'll still have some players playing for some end of the season awards. So you do have to watch out for that. The Brewers, I mean, they're still going to have a great rotation with the Burns. The Woodrows, the Peraltas, the Yelches are having quietly a solid and a little bit of a bounce back season from what we've seen the last couple of years. Not MVP Yelch, but still looking like a an all star level player. Can't take the Brewers too lightly. And then the D backs, we just saw the D backs take it to the Cubs in their most recent series, like last week. Cubs versus D-backs round two. Hopefully the D-backs can take it to the Cubs because, of course, the D-backs sweep the Cubs. The D-backs will own the tiebreaker over the Cubs as well. So the D-backs could really use a a, a big series win there as well. And once again, the Rockies against the Cubs. I don't think the Cubs have to worry about the Rockies. Now, maybe the Pirates play a little spoiler because they will be playing so many young guys probably at the end of the season. But again, if you're the Cubs, with how many runs the, the how with how Often, this Cubs team can score in the high frequency that they can score with. I wouldn't be too worried against this Pirates offense if you're the Chicago Cubs. So, Cubs, I think, have the second toughest schedule remaining in the National League wildcard race. Now, if you want to hear where the D-backs rank in this power ranking, you're going to have to stay tuned after a quick word from our sponsor because I want to talk to you guys about Jace Medical because... Everyone should be empowered to take care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you can have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. 
Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using code LOCKEDON at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code LOCKEDON. And don't forget to catch every D-backs pitch on their hometown broadcast when you download the Series XM app and search up Diamondbacks. Now let's get back into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast and let's continue the rest of the power ranking for the remaining strength of schedule in the NL wildcard race. Number three, I got the Miami Marlins because they play the Braves, Mets, Brewers, Mets, and Padres. That's two playoff teams with the Braves and they play the Braves next. So this is still early enough in the Braves season where, yes, they probably have the number one seed locked up, but the Braves are still going full throttle at this point. So you will see the full Braves experience if you're a Marlins fan. And then the Mets, still a high payroll team, just like the Padres, like two high payroll teams. Like you can't sleep on those teams like the Mets and Padres. I don't see them like starting to unload their farm system at the end of the season. Like you're still going to see the, you're still going to see the Pete Alonzo's, the Lindor's, the Juan Soto's, the, the Fernando Tatis's. I think at the end of the season, I still think you're going to get the full arsenal of both the Mets and Padres. And with, the amount of money those two teams have committed to the payroll. Like, those two teams still have a ton of talent. Like, the D-backs just saw it against the Mets, saw them lose three out of four. So, if you're the Marlins against a division opponent in the New York Mets, you can't sleep on that matchup. I think this Marlins schedule is tough remaining. Like, I debated putting the Marlins higher because, on paper, Braves, Mets, Brewers, Mets, Padres, like, entering the season, those are, like, five locked-in playoff teams Entering the season, obviously, didn't shake out that way. The Mets and Padres, but I still have respect for those teams because by the numbers, it tells you that the Padres probably should be a playoff team because they they have like the best pitching staff in terms of ERA. They score runs like the Padres probably should be a playoff team by the numbers. One of the better run differentials in this NL, in this National League <laughs> overall. And the Mets, I mean, still loaded with talents we just saw. So Marlins, I think, have the third hardest remaining schedule in the National League wildcard race. Number four, actually have the D-backs. They played the Cubs, Giants, Yankees, White Sox, and Astros. A very weird last five games because two of them, or excuse me, three of them come against American League opponents. But only one locked-in playoff team against the D-backs in the uh, Houston Astros, who will probably win the AOS. Two potential wildcard teams in the Giants and Cubs. Uh, if everything goes right, only one of them will make it because the D-backs will own the other wild card spot. And then two non-playoff teams and the Yankees and White Sox. The Astros, it will be the last series of the year for the D-backs going against Houston. Houston might have that division locked up with nothing to play for. Maybe they rest a couple guys. Doesn't really happen in baseball too much, but you never know. Maybe they sit on Jose Altuve, Jordan Alvarez, and could really help out this D-backs team. You're not going to get any help going against the Cubs, going against the Giants, because those are going to be battles for tiebreakers in those series. So the D-backs are desperately going to need to take out both the Cubs and the Giants. Neither one of those is going to be easy with this Cubs high-powered offense, deep lineup, solid rotation. This Giants team, I don't love them on paper, but they just know how to win games as a franchise. They are so highly intelligent, so can never sleep on the San Francisco Giants. The White Sox, I will sleep on. I will be very disappointed if the D-backs don't take it to the White Sox because I just think that's a terrible franchise. The Yankees do make me a little nervous because they are already starting to unload their young farm system. So maybe that's where you could catch them. The fact that they're going to play, the fact that they will be playing a lot of young, unexperienced talent. But they're just something that makes me queasy about traveling to New York once again after seeing the D-backs just get shellacked by the New York Mets. Traveling to New York because I believe they're going, yeah, there'll be a New York to play the Yankees. So that does scare me going from West Coast the East Coast. And then the team that I think with the easiest remaining strength of schedule in the National League wildcard race, I don't even think it's close. It's the Cincinnati Reds because you look at their schedule. They, they <clears throat> excuse me, they play the Mets, the Twins, the Pirates, the Guardians, and the Cardinals. The Mets, of course, big payroll like we've been discussing, but only one playoff team there. The Minnesota Twins, who are only a playoff team virtue of the division that they play in, the AL Central, because you want to hear something crazy? The D-backs, of course, fighting for that third wildcard spot with 76 wins. The Twins, eight-game lead in their division. You know how many wins? 77 wins for the Twins. They are no better than this D-back squad. 
and they are the toughest opponent the Reds are going to face down the stretch. So basically the toughest opponent, the D bat, basically the toughest opponents the Reds are going to face down the stretch is a D backs S team, which is very good. But listen, the D backs are no Dodgers or Braves. So not really facing a world series contender if you're the Reds. And then you're playing the Mets who should be tough. Like I said, the pirates, I don't know. We'll see about that. The guardians. Ah, I don't know about them either. And then the St. Louis Cardinals. I mean, the final series of the year against the Cardinals. Yeah, they might be sitting a Nolan Arenado, and Paul Goldschmidt at that time. They do have a ton of young, young talent like the Jordan Walkers of the world that they probably want to display at that point of the season. But the Reds, easiest strength to schedule. Final power ranking. Giants toughest. Second Cubs. Three Miami Marlins. Four D-backs. And then five Cincinnati Reds. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You have to beat who's in front of you if you're the D-backs and make it to the postseason. I want to face good teams down the stretch because it will just battle test the D-backs for the postseason. Let's finish this year strong. Let's make it to the playoffs. And let's give our fans a great postseason run. Now, that's it for this edition of the Lockdown Dimebacks podcast. Come back next week for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. Thank you for making Lockdown Dimebacks your first listen every day. Don't forget to catch every D-backs pitch on their hometown broadcast. When you download the series XM app and search up Diamondbacks. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Doses.